What's up, everybody? This is Alex Christopher with The Durad. I'm here with Alexander Mercurius, Editor-in-Chief of The Durad. And today we're going to be taking a look at Glenn Simpson's refusal to testify to Congress. All right, Alexander, we've been covering this story for a while now. Um, the story's been going on for a while. The Russiagate story, the, the Mueller investigation, Carter Page, FISA documents, you know, call it, you know, the whole thing. But, you know, we've we focused, we've done a very good job and you've, you've really narrowed it down and you've zeroed in on Christopher Steele, on Glenn Simpson, on Halper, on Mifsud, on all these guys located where you are right now in the UK. And uh, except for, for Simpson, these guys, you know, that were in the UK and how they worked with Fusion GPS to essentially, to put it simplistically, to frame Trump to frame Carter Page of Papadopoulos, who would in turn frame Trump. Um, and now you it's kind of come full circle, and Congress wants Simpson to testify. And Simpson, much to our surprise, is pleading the fifth. What do you make of this breaking news? Well, I, I think it is completely predictable. I mean, first of all, let, let's be very clear to our viewers that what you said is absolutely right. The, what they were trying to do was frame Donald Trump. I mean, uh, all these people that we've been hearing about, Carter Page, uh, George Papadopoulos, um, um, and the rest, I mean, they are, they are casualties in the war that was being waged by the Democrats th through Glenn Simpson, who was their point man, um, in order to derail Donald Trump, firstly, to prevent him getting elected, and then when that failed, to prevent him first becoming president and then to have him removed as president um, after he was, in fact, confirmed as president by the Electoral College by getting this whole ridiculous Russiagate thing up and running and this whole extraordinary collusion uh, story. Now, Glenn Simpson is central to all of this because he was the person who uh, uh, employed directly Christopher Steele, who gave Christopher Steele the orders he gave an extraordinarily misleading um, testimony to the Senate Intelligence Committee, which I've read. I've read it through. It's long. It's packed with information. And I'm afraid we now know that some of the things uh, uh, Glenn Simpson said in that testimony were, if not exactly outright lies, because he's a clever man and he knows he shouldn't straightforwardly lie, they were certainly extremely misleading. So um, um, it's completely unsurprising that now that we know an awful lot more than we did when he appeared before the Senate um, a year uh, over a year ago, that he doesn't want to appear before the House and answer the sort of questions that people like Trey Gowdy and uh, David Nunes and the others might ask for him. And I'm going to repeat something I've made many, many, many times on our various programs, which is that the Republicans, unfortunately, have left this all extremely late because they should have been asking, they should have been insisting on seeing Simpson uh, months ago. They should have been imposing subpoenas on him. They should have been threatening him with contempt of Congress if he didn't come. Um, they should have held up the fact, as I said, that he was refusing to answer questions. Um, and they should have been doing all of this months ago. Now we are almost up to the wire with the midterms coming up in just three weeks. And of course, that's exactly what Simpson knows. And that's exactly why he's not coming forward. And he says that he's not going to come forward because doing so is going to jeopardize this phony Russiagate investigation. So he's coming up with excuses, which he knows are excuses because he hopes that in a few times the Democrats will be in charge of the, of the House so that come January, it won't be Devin Nunes and Trey Gowdy who will be running the committee, but his friend Adam Schiff. Oh my God, Adam Schiff running the committee. There's something for you. Um, if that's not a reason to vote Republican, I don't know what is. <laughs> but, well, uh, I, I, yeah. I think Republicans, I think Republicans who are, are watching us, 
should realize that that is a distinct possibility. I mean, I, I, I'm not an, I'm not a, a US citizen. I have no vote in this election. But I think that is something that Republicans ought to know. That, as I said, come January, if the Democrats are in control of the House of Representatives because of the way people are voting, in the, people will vote in November, Adam Schiff will be in charge of the committee. He is the ranking Democrat on the committee. He will become its chair. He will be in the driving seat. No longer do Nunes anymore. He's, he's, he's a ranking clown is what he is. But... Um... What do you make? I mean, obviously, I agree with you. I think Simpson is buying time. It, it seems pretty obvious that he's buying time for the midterms. What do you make of the letter his lawyers uh, set, sent out to, to basically state that he will be pleading the fifth? And I mean, it, to summarize what his lawyers said is they said that basically, you know, the, the Republicans and, and the House, they're, they, they've been over Nunez, you know, Gowdy, all these guys, they've been trying to defame and discredit Simpson and Christopher Steele from the beginning. So, I mean, they're, they're playing the victim card and the lawyer sent out a very strong statement saying that, you know, Simpson and Steele in the end are these reputable figures who have now been, you know, victimized by, by Nunez and, and, and his crew in, in, in Congress. What do you make of that? Well, I think it is utterly mendacious. I think it is complete nonsense. I think, first of all, I mean, we have to go back to how uh, a Simpson got in touch with Steele and who he was working for. He was working for the Democrats. He was being paid by the DNC and by the Hillary Clinton campaign to unearth dirt on Donald Trump. And he went to Christopher Steele, who went off to various contacts he has in Russia with the job of unearthing dirt on Donald Trump. And this is all going on at the same time as there was this huge campaign by members of the, well, let's call it the deep state, the, the intelligence community, uh, uh, Halper, uh, um, um, Mifsud, all these other strange and mysterious people uh, working on Papadopoulos to provoke them into providing more information and, and to discredit Donald Trump even further. So that is what Glenn Simpson was all about. Um, that is what the Republicans on the House Intelligence Committee have uncovered. And let's be quite clear about this. Nunes and Gaudi especially, and Jordan and some of the others on the committee, they are the ones who've done all the, all the, you know, they've moved the earth. They've done all the excavating. They've found out all of these things. And it's no longer, I think, even an issue because the FBI itself has, um, confirmed that this person, who Glenn Simpson still stands by, uh, Christopher Steele, the FBI has admitted it cannot verify its, his dossier. The FBI has admitted that he was a paid informer of the FBI. The FBI has admitted that Christopher Steele had to be sacked as a paid informer of the FBI because um, of the way in which Chris, Christopher Steele was talking to the media about Donald Trump. The FBI has admitted that Christopher Steele was massively biased against Donald Trump. And the FBI has admitted that they continued to speak to Steele through Bruce Orr even after they'd formally sacked him. So, you know, what um, um, Simpson and his lawyer are saying in that letter is predictable, but it isn't, we should not be fooled by it. We have a mass of evidence that says a completely different story. And it's because we have that mass of evidence that, that Glenn Simpson doesn't want to go back before the House Intelligence Committee and, and give evidence to them, give testimony to them, because he knows that unlike the situation a year ago when he went before the Senate Intelligence Committee and he was able basically to pull the wool over everybody's eyes in front of people like Nunes and Gaudi and Jordan and the others, he has no chance. So that's why he won't he won't uh, speak to them. And that's why he pleads, as you said, essentially the fifth and why essentially he is uh, trying to discredit them and playing victim. But we should it, not be fooled by it. No, I don't, no, I don't think anyone's fooled by it at this point after everything we've uncovered no. from the Russia hoax um, and the way they targeted Donald Trump. Um, if, if Simpson's gambit 
pays off and the Democrats do take the House in the midterms. Do you think my greatest fear, and I want to hear your take on it, is, is, is this will get swept under the rug and the Democrats then will open up committee after committee after committee. Um, they will attack Trump. They will attack Russia. And they'll open up a whole nother, you know, Pandora's box of, of allegations, false allegations and lies to try and discredit Trump. So at all this work that Jordan, that Nunez, that Gowdy, all these guys that you said that ex ex excavated <laughs> all this information is just going to get vanished. It's just going to disappear. <laughs> Well, that has to be the fear. There is one there is one point I would make though. If the Republicans hold on to the Senate, which most people think they will, and the Kavanaugh affair may mean that they're more likely now to hold on to the Senate than seemed likely just a few weeks ago. Um then of course, um it's possible, it's possible that Trump will sack uh, Jeff Sessions, the Attorney General, um after November and put somebody closer to himself in charge of the Senate, uh, in charge of the Justice Department as Attorney General, and that that person, there's some talk, suggestions that it could be Lindsey Graham, might appoint a special prosecutor, a special counsel in Mueller's place to investigate all of those things, in which case it won't be wasted. All the work that Nunes and Gowdy and Jordan and the others have done won't be wasted. It will be the starting point of what I suspect would be a massive investigation, which will go much further than anything we've seen up to now, and which will proceed irrespective of what Adam Schiff and the Democrats in the House uh, uh, try uh, uh, and, and cobble together. But obviously, it would have been far better if this had all been done months ago rather than now. So, uh, you know, and, and the risk must be that it will be buried. That is what the Democrats in the House will try and do. And that's what the people in the Department of Justice and in the FBI and in uh, Mueller's uh, team and elsewhere will also try to do. And if the Democrats win the House in November, they, you know, the advantage will be theirs, unquestionably. A lot at stake during these uh, midterms, a lot at stake. There is a huge amount at stake. I don't think there's ever been so much at stake at any time in a midterm election that I can remember. I mean, I, I can remember the first midterm elections into Clinton's presidency, which also looked important and which the Republicans won. But I think that these actually are more important because we have a, a Democratic Party which has been openly looking to remove Trump from the moment that he was elected. I mean, they've been, they've been uh, gearing up to that objective all along. And we see a deeply polarized situation in the United States. And we've seen all this massive information coming out about all the things that went wrong within the intelligence and security services. And there is a public interest in bringing all this up. So, um, as I said, I don't have a vote in these elections. But if only in order to see the truth, if I did have a vote, I would be voting Republican. <laughs> I've said it now. I've said it now openly <laughs> for that reason, for that reason, right. because I don't want to see the hard work that Nunes and Gaudi and the others, uh, I don't want to see it go to waste. And though there's a chance that it, you know, changes at the Justice Department may mean that it won't go to, to waste. Um, I'm afraid there is a very big risk that it may do. And I think that the public interest, the national interest of the United States requires that this thing be investigated to the end. I fully agree. Alexander McCurse, Editor-in-Chief of The Durant. Thank you very much. Guys, if you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below and click on the notifications bell to get notifications every time we push out a new video. And visit the Duran shop, pick up a t-shirt, help support the Duran. And in the description box down below, you will find links to our PayPal and Patreon page. Donate to the Duran, help us to continue to create videos like this just for you. Alexander McCurry, Editor-in-Chief of the Duran, thank you very much. Until next time, take care.